Good morning to everyone. It's truly a blessing for us to be here this day, another day that the Lord has given us, and we want to give Him thanks and all praises. Uh, today, I stand before you to welcome you to our service uh, this month of October, which is a very important month, calendar year month for our church and being World Communion, uh, Children's Sabbath, Laity, and Pastors Appreciation all around the country. But today we want to welcome you here at William Chapel for our service, and we hope you enjoy our program. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Now our scripture for today comes from Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord He is God. It is He that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, once again, we come to thank you for this opportunity to give us this day. We come to our church for service on our glorious morning here in the fall.
to deter you too long, if you will, let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the love and grace that you extend in each of us this day, Heavenly Father, and each day of our life. Father God, we know that these are times that we've never seen before, dear God, but we know that you are still in control. And Father God, we ask you to continue to be with us, keep us, and guide us, dear God. Father God, let the words from my mouth, Heavenly Father, the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. Use me, dear God, as you see fit. In the name of your son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. I'll be coming to you today from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in desire, despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. In the times that we are in, I would ask, what do you do when you've done all you can? What do you do when you've done all you can? We all have experienced adversities in our lives. But in this day and time, we know that so many are going through troubled times. So many are going without work. So many are going not knowing where their next paycheck or their next meal is going to come from. And we have so many that have lost loved ones during this time in our lives when this is the first pandemic a lot of us has ever been through. And it's one that in days that we've never seen before. But I like how Paul continues to remind us that even when we seem that we are at our wit's end, He's telling us continue to just stand firm. We have to learn to stand firm on God's word. We continue to turn to God and his word during these times for strength and for comfort. Because we feel like we've, we've done all that we can, all that's in our might. So what else is there to do other than stand and trust on the word of God? Paul give us advice on how to remain steadfast. It said, even when we are in despair, even when we are perplexed about the things that's going on in the world around us, we must remember that God is still in control. All things are in his control, even when we see death on every side, when we see so many sick, when we see so many that's without jobs, without so, so many of the necessities that they need, we must remember that God is on our side. Power reminds us as we walk and as we feel like we're at the end of that rope, we feel like we can barely hang on, we must never give up hope. We must always continue to trust in God on any and every opportunity that we have. Never give up hope and trusting in God. Continue to keep your hands in God's hand. Paul is reminding us when you've done all you can, just stand. Stand and watch our God work. Stand and trust in him. Even though we are going through, we must continue to never underestimate the power and the comfort and the love that God has for us. God's love is unperishable. It's a love that no one can ever have for us that our Father has. Paul taught us 
and it's teaching us that even though things might look like they're at the end, but we know that God has promised to be with us through it all. Paul promised that success we have something to look forward to if we just continue to hold on in these trouble and dire times. We know that adversity and unfavored fortune and fate is at all of our door and can be at all of our door at any moment. But we must continue to, to know that even though the stress is there and the circumstances are out of our control, we must continue to trust in God. I ask you, what do you do when you've done all you can? You must simply stand. Stand on the word of God, stand on his strength, stand on his comfort and knowing that he's going to be with you through it all. Paul looked to God for strength. We must learn to do the same. Even though you feel like you don't, you, you don't have the strength to get up to continue to go, you don't know how you're going to act those parents. So many parents are trying to maneuver through the, the school online and you feel like you can't do it and, and we just at your wits end just want to give up. We must continue to hold on, never give up, never give up. We may bend, but we are not made to break. We have a God that can hold us through anything. We have a God that's going to be by our side no matter what the opposition is coming, whether it's slamming and disappointment, whether we're threatening a rob. We must remember that God has already won the victory. We must continue to know that even though Jesus came and died for us, we must stand through these times of adversity. Adversity will come. Suffering will come. We will have trials. Tri We're in trials right now. We must learn that even in distress, we must appreciate the good news. Appreciate and tell us about how God has brought you through these times. Paul is telling us to stand. Even though you don't know what tomorrow is going to hold, still stand. The journey is not ours and it's not easy, but yet God said, I will be with you to it all. I will hold your hand. I will be by your side through it all. He promised to never forsake us. It's easy to say things are good when everything is going good, when you got money in the bank, you got food in your cabin, and your children are doing fine. But what do you do when that money runs out? You don't know where your next check coming from. You don't know how you're going to help these kids with this online school that we are helping to go through. God is simply asking you to continue to stand on his word. What do you do when you've done all you can? Simply stand and trust in the promises that our Father has put before us that he's promised us. No matter what happens in this life, we have assurance of eternal life. When all the suffering we're in, when all the hard times are gone, we must continue to stand and look forward to that coming and final victory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What must we do? We must not concentrate on the things that we see. But we know that we have faith in God. We know faith is, is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is that thing you have when you don't see what's coming around the bend. Not that the things you see, if you, have, if you see what's coming around the bend, you can be ready for it. But that faith is trusting in God and knowing that no matter what's coming, he's going to be by my side. Yeah. He's going to guide me through this. Even though rocks are being thrown and I'm tripping and I'm falling over the thing that's taking place, God is going to be there with us. Right. When that money is running short, when you ain't got one loaf of bread left, Amen. just remember that God is going to supply the meat that you need to feed your body. He said he would give us all the things that we need, everything that we need, and he would give us the desires of our heart, and we only trust in the faith in him. Trust in God. It's easy to lose hope. It's easy to be faced with things that you don't quite understand. Right now, we are all going through problems. Some are worse than others. A lot of us haven't just felt the issues of being out of work, especially for a lot of the essential workers. But it's still hard on them as they go through being without their families from day to day. When we know that our firefighters and our nurses and so many are away from their families, putting their lives at jeopardy to save our loved ones. We have lost so many in this pandemic. And we have so many more that's getting sick every day. But I'd like to say to each of you, continue to stand on God's promises. We must not quit. We must not give up. No matter what it looks like today, continue to trust and know that God is God. God's got you. 
He got me. He has us all, but we must continue to trust in him. Even when you don't know what tomorrow is going to hold, because we, none of us know. None of us know if we're going to make it through this day. But God promised us we must keep faith and stand firm. And we will feel and know that even though our hearts hurt, our hearts ache, and so many loved ones are gone, God is a God that loves us. And he's a God of commitment. When he made those promises, his promises and his word were not returned to him, Lord. So I would say to all of you, when you've done all you can, when you feel that you're at your wit's end, please continue to stand. Stand on God's words. Stand when you have nothing else to do. Say your prayer. God, be with me. God, continue to give me strength. So as we prepare to close today, continue to trust in your Savior. Continue to know that no matter what the obstacle is, God will be there for you. In Jesus' name, I bring greetings once more from Spring from William Chapel United Methodist Church. As we prepare to close today, I want to close with a word of prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the love and the strength that you've given us. Father God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that whoever this word gets to, dear God, that it give them the ability, Heavenly Father, to hold on a little while longer. Father God, I know that we're living in dark times right now. But dear God, I know that you are a light that we can look up to. Heavenly Father, be with your children. Heavenly Father, I pray, dear God, for the leaders of this country. Father God, I pray for all of us, Heavenly Father, who's going to be affected of their choices. But Master, I know that you are God that's in control. I have no fear of them, Master, I have no doubt. But Father God, we continue to trust in thee. So, message we prepare to close today. Dear God, just be with our pastor, dear God, as he celebrated pastor appreciation this month. Best as I prayed earlier, continue to give him strength. Dear God, and give us the ability at congregants, Heavenly Father, to be with him and continue to lift him up. I pray for all my sick and shedding in dear God, those who may have desired to be in the church just one more time. But Father God, we know that through these times that there we're not able. But Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to reach people this way. Father God, we know that social media is, 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 a, is a tool that we can use, Heavenly Father, that can reach thousands and thousands of people. But Father God, we just ask you to pray for a little power. Heavenly Father, all of those bereaved, Heavenly Father, who's going through right now, be with them, dear Master. Comfort them, dear God, that only you can. And God, as we prepare to close, I thank you, dear God. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So I'm going to let you know, if there's anybody in this building that the King Spirit has did anything to you down through the year, we apologize. Harvey Jr., speaking personally for me too now. If I've done something to anybody in this building that I shouldn't have done, if I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. I want you to forgive me. You know why? Because I don't want to be wrong.